Okay, we're going to take a look at a stoplight project, and you are? Robert Wells. Okay, Robert, you're going to tell us how this works in a minute. Let me just cruise around the major hardware here. So we've got your laptop, and I presume the laptop has the code that is then loaded into your chip, and right. then the chip takes it from there, right? So walk me through what we've got and what's going on. Okay, um, the project is set up to where if there's no cars in the left turn lanes, that the left turn signals will remain red, and it'll just cycle between the north-south and east-west lanes only. So, so that, we've got a full four-way intersection, and every direction has a left turn lane in the middle, correct? Correct. Okay, and so they basically stay red, unless a vehicle shows up. And how do you know if a vehicle shows up? Well, I've got sensors, uh, read magnetic switches implanted in the roadway that, and I installed magnets on the bottoms of the cars so that when the cars is sitting above the read switch, it's supposed to open the switch and send a no voltage to the chip indicating there's a car there. Okay. But unfortunately, my magnets apparently aren't strong enough to activate it, so the only way I can simulate the turn signals is to disconnect the power so that it sends the low signal to the chip. Right now, they're constantly getting a high signal. Okay. So that part of my signal circuit isn't functioning properly. Okay, so where should I be looking if I see the light, to see the lights change when you okay, trigger I'll something? Disconnect this so the next time it gets to that part, see now the left turn signal turned green. Oh, okay, so yeah, so that vehicle has a green light. And this one over here does as well, then it switches to yellow. Okay, it goes to yellow. And back and to the red. Main, oh, okay. Once turn green for traffic going straight. So the straight traffic for that lane or those lanes is now turned green. Okay. And will that stay green or will it will automatically go to yellow red? Yeah, I've got the main straight ones programmed to stay green for 20 seconds, then go to yellow, stay yellow for five seconds, and then go. Oh to yeah. Red. Okay. This one went red. And now it's got the green light for this turn lane. Okay. The turn lanes are programmed to stay green for only 10 seconds. Okay, so they're... Then yellow for five and then go to red. So it went green, it was yellow, now it's red. And now okay. so it should the, go green for this direction. So this green guy should light up shortly. Wait a minute. Okay. Oops. Okay, yeah, now it's green back this direction. Okay, so it's cycled through. Okay, so you used magnetic read switches for the sensors, and so the magnets weren't strong enough. What would you do to fix it next time? <clears throat> um, well, when I first put it together, they, the read switches were close enough that it was working, but then after I mounted them on a circuit board, you know, so I could solder the connections to it. Yeah. It moved it down far enough that I guess it's not close enough for the magnets to trip the switch. Huh, okay. So, I see a lot of wires there. What are the components on the board? Um, these chips are just 330 ohm resistor packs for the diode so I don't draw too much current on okay. my chip and burn up my chip. And your board here is? the. It's an Arduino Mega. It's got um, 32 digital input-output pins. It's got 12 um, analog pins here. Mm -hmm. uh, it's got, wait, no, 12 PWM pins. It's got 16 analog input pins. Okay. The analog are input only. Now you can program some of the um, digital output pins to be analog out, but the analog in pins are strictly analog in. 
Okay, do they automatically have ADC analog to digital built in or do you have to do that externally? Um, that I don't know. Okay, so let's back up one more and get one more view of the whole thing. So we have the inventor, we have the intersection with what goes east-west and north-south with turn signals, we have the chip, and we have the PC that does the programming. And the language in this chip is? It's a processing language. It's a form of uh, the C programming language. Okay, so it looks like C when you look at it? Yeah, it's got a few differences. It was written by a couple of people from uh, right. MIT, because when you open up the, the software, it's got their names in MIT um, 2001, 2004. Great. All right. Thank you very much.